In this video, I'll show you how to use slopes of secant lines as under and over estimates to slopes of tangent lines. Let's think about the scenario where a person takes 400 milligrams of ibuprofen. If we think about the ibuprofen leaving the body, we might want to know how quickly the ibuprofen is leaving the body exactly four hours later. We'll think about this scenario graphically. We have the horizontal axis as the elapsed time in hours since the ibuprofen is administered, and the vertical axis will be the amount of ibuprofen in milligrams. We'll let y equals f of t be the amount of ibuprofen in milligrams, t hours since taking the pills. Let's go back to the time the ibuprofen was taken and create the graph. We can approximate the instantaneous rate of change at t equals 4 hours by using an average rate of change over a small interval. To see some smaller intervals, we'll zoom in on the graph. Let's start by looking at the average rate over the interval from 4 to 4.5 hours. We'll use the length of a red arrow to show the amount of change in time from 4 to 4.5 hours and the length of a blue arrow to represent the change in the amount of ibuprofen. In this case, it's negative 15.9977 milligrams. So, at t equals 4, the instantaneous rate of change is approximated by the average rate of change from 4 hours to 4.5 hours. In particular, the average rate of change is the difference between f evaluated at 4 plus 0.5 hours and f of 4 divided by 0.5. With a few more calculations, we see that over this interval of time, ibuprofen leaves the body at a rate of almost 32 milligrams per hour. On the graph, this value, negative 31.9953 milligrams per hour, is the same as the slope of the secant line connecting the endpoints of the interval. The secant line is close to the graph of f of t, but it's not perfect. The secant line is straight, while we can still see that the graph of f is curved over this interval. This is because the secant line is modeling a constant rate, but the ibuprofen isn't decreasing at a constant rate over this interval. To get a better approximation, let's look at some smaller intervals of time. As we can see, as we use smaller and smaller time intervals, the graph of f over the smaller intervals looks straighter. When our interval is small enough, the amount of ibuprofen varies at essentially a constant rate with respect to the elapsed time over that tiny interval. And, as we make the interval smaller, the slope of the secant line approaches the slope of the tangent line. The slopes of the secant lines were approaching the value negative 34.7. This is a good approximation for the slope of the tangent line, but how good is it? To get a sense of the precision, let's go back to our original half-second interval and redraw that secant line. Now, in addition to the interval from 4 to 4.5 hours, let's also look at the interval from 3.5 to 4 hours. I'll add a red arrow to illustrate this amount of change in time. Since we're going back in time, this is negative one half hour. Next, I'll now add the corresponding amount of change in ibuprofen, which is a positive 18.9857 milligrams. Let's use this new interval to think about the instantaneous rate of change at 4 hours. Like before, this is approximated using a change in f divided by the change in t. For this interval, it's the difference between f evaluated at 4 minus 0.5 hours and f of 4 divided by negative 0.5. With a few more calculations, we see that over this new interval of time, ibuprofen leaves the body at a rate of almost 38 milligrams per hour. On the graph, this value would be the slope of a second secant line, shown in purple, connecting the endpoints of the interval. Now, we know that the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the slope of the tangent line, which is the limit, as delta t approaches zero, of the average rates over these intervals. We can see that when we use intervals that go from 4 hours to larger amounts of time, the secant lines have negative slope and are less steep than the tangent line. So, 
the negative 31.995 milligrams per hour would be greater than the limit of the slopes, making this value an overestimate of the instantaneous rate of change. When we use intervals that go from 4 hours to smaller amounts of time, the secant lines have negative slope and are steeper than the tangent line. So, the negative 37.971 milligrams per hour would be less than the limit of these slopes, making this value an underestimate of the instantaneous rate of change. Of course, we can do better by using smaller intervals. Let's watch what happens. As the amount of change in time decreases, the slope of the purple secant line approaches the slope of the black tangent line, although its slope stays more negative than the slope of the black line. Similarly, the slope of the green secant line approaches the slope of the black tangent line, although its slope also stays more positive. Now, this limit is between negative 34.956 and negative 34.67 milligrams per hour which is a much smaller range for our instantaneous rate of change. Although we haven't come up with a single number for the instantaneous rate of change of the amount of ibuprofen with respect to elapsed time, we can say that this limit of the slopes of the secant lines, which we write as f' prime of 4, is between the under and over estimates. And now we've seen a method using average rates of change to compute overestimates and underestimates to find a range of possible values for the instantaneous rate of change.